Today we are going to discuss the Shield's coat of arms. But before we get started, we wanted to let you know that we offer a genealogy research service at our website. Please visit us at coadb.com. Now, this is a hard one. There was a lot of coats of arms for the Shield surname, and some of them we weren't quite able to identify, including the first one. The blazon is Ghouls, a lion passant garden between three Escalops Argent. And it looks rather old given its simple design, so I would guess that it is from feudal times. Next, Argent, six hertz, two, two, and two. Crest, a demi leopard rampant ore. And the source noted that was from England, and that's all we know about it. Um, there. I have a list here of some people from England who it could be, that could have been granted to. There was a Thomas Clinton Shields of East Stonehouse in Devonshire, England, who was a banker in Plymouth Dock and Magistrate. We know he had a coat of arms granted in 1815. I'm not sure if this is his, but it is one possibility. There was also William Shield, who was resident commissioner of the Plymouth Dockyard and deputy comptroller of the Navy. James Waldegrave Ludlow Shields, who entered the Navy in 1814 and was commander of the Raven. Um, here's another for Shields. Same situation uh, from England. And I have a list of the same people here, some candidates. Um, ones I didn't mention on the previous slide. William Shields, born 1748, an English composer and violinist. Nathaniel Shields, who died in 1780, who was captain of HMS Thetis, and there was Richard Henry Scheele, a Liverpool merchant. And here we come to the first one where we know the family it belonged to, or the individual. This was for the Shield family of Uppingham in Rutland, England. William Shield, who died in 1880, was of Wing in Rutland, and was born with the surname Gilson, but assumed his mother's surname of Mary Shield. Now, there was also Shield of Wing, Robert Shield of Wing, who was High Sheriff of Rutland in 1820, Henry Shield, and another Henry Shield, who was Rector. They have memorials in Preston, which is two miles north of Uppingham. Next, we have one from County Northumberland, belonged to Hugh Shield, born 1831, who we see here. He was a barrister who sat in the House of Commons, the second son of John Shield, Esquire. And Hugh lived at Stotes Hall in Northumberland and afterwards at Gunn's Greenhouse in Berwickshire. And there was a Hugh Shield who purchased Broomhaw in Northumberland in 1815 and later inherited, which was later inherited by his brother, John Shield, a wholesale grocer. In Newcastle and Poets, they were sons of John Shield, who died in 1782. Next, the arms of Reverend Henry Shield, born 1757, rector of Preston and of Stoke Dry, both in Rutland, England. The coat of arms of Alexander Shield, or Shields of Scotland, born 1661, a Scottish Presbyterian minister and author who was imprisoned in London. He served as chaplain to King William's armies in the Low Countries, and he once escaped prison dressed as a woman. Shields or Shields from Scotland, and I have a list of possibilities here. Wasn't able to pin it down to which one, but um, candidates could be James Shield, court officer in Scottish Parliament in 1587, Archibald Shields, who represented Peebles in the Scottish Parliament in 1706, Robert Shields, who died in 1753, a compiler, secretary to Dr. Samuel Johnson, William Shields, a quartermaster sergeant, Patrick Shields, who died in 1668, of Glasgow, he was on the Commission Assembly in 1647, George Shields, he was a minister in Edinburgh in the 17th century, and John Shield, who died in 1875, of Kelly Castle in Scotland. Another, um, Argent Unifest Azure between three escutcheons vert, as many crescents or. There's also a crest, a cubit arm, surrounded by flames, uh, holding a dagger, which isn't depicted. 
And this is the arms and crest of Anthony George Scheele, Esquire, who was born in 1842 of the Middle Temple in London, who served in the court of Calcutta, India, son of the eldest son of John Shield, Esquire of Smithfield, Dundee, who was a justice of the peace for poor far Scotland. O'Shiel of Ireland, Lucas Shiel of France, was confirmed this coat of arms in 1754 and was said to be fourth in descent from Lucas Shiel of Castle Burke in Galway, Ireland, who was the great grandson of Edward Shiel, Esquire of Drummard in County Tyrone, who lived in the year 1504. And this was also confirmed to George Shields, Esquire of Drums Hallen in County Louth, Ireland, in the year 1806. Next, Shields of Waynestown in County Meath, Ireland. The family descended from Captain Robert Shields. He was of Scotch descent. He settled in Ireland and was granted lands in Meath in the year 1667. He had son Michael Shields, who died in 1708, and Thomas Shields. Shield of Ireland wasn't able to find the armager on this one, but there are several possibilities, which we list here. Toby Shield, a merchant in the 17th century. George Shields, merchant in Dublin. Richard Lawler Shield, an Irish politician and orator. Edward Shield, he was an estate owner in Tipperary who acquired wealth in Cadiz, Spain. Uh, William Shields, Esquire of Newton Darver in Louth. Major General Justin Shield, army officer, diplomat, and British envoy to Persia the son of Edward Shield of Bellevue House in Waterford, Ireland. And there was Lawrence Shell, who was a Franciscan friar and Bishop of Adelaide, Australia. Shields of Ireland, again, and I have uh, numerous possibilities for this one. I'm not going to read them all. Um, and it's the same situation for this coat of arms from Ireland as well. Um, there was a Queely Shield who died in 1847. He was an Irish landowner in Montserrat, controller of customs. Um, he's one candidate. Hugh Shield of Clown Meath, gentleman. Um, there's one that's a medical doctor in here, one that's a brewer, one that was a lieutenant in the Royal Navy, and one that was a reverend, it looks like. And if you enjoyed this video, please visit us at coadb.com, link in the description. Thank you very much.